trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we live higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we live higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. Whoa, we trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forever. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, 
There is a cross that bears a burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. And should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning, either way I will bow to the things of this world. I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding, the power set me free. There is a grave that holds nobody. Now the power. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. Amen. Woo. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. There'll be another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the water holding back the sea. And should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me, I've come to join from every battle because I know that. As the darkness bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between winds thin, I can feel the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls cave in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. Should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me? I cut the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I cut the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I've cut the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I've cut the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. 
I'll take the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. Yeah. Thank you for your promise. Take all I have in these hands and multiply, God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Take all I have in these hands and multiply, God. All that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Here I am, God, arms wide open. Pouring out my life brings fully
Seen every care on you. I have carried them enough. We're not alone here within his love. Emmanuel, he is still with us. Mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive Receive it now, here in the presence of the Lord. I know your past is broken. You can move on, it's over now. Here in the presence of the
Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Pastor. Would you reinforce the word to us, Lord? Minister to us and open our hearts to what you want us to hear. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're wrapping up our series on mental health that, we'll be doing, that we've been doing called Peace of Mind. And I know this isn't a subject that we typically talk about in the church, but yet it's something that I, I really feel deep in my heart that we, we really need to look at and address. Um, and today, what we're going to talk about, to me, is probably the most difficult for us to deal with. I know that as I was going through um, this outline and and um, praying over it and, and just letting it soak into my heart that um, there's things in my life I, I haven't really dealt with. And um, as Christians, I think that we need to be transparent and open with God. And um, not that God doesn't know what's going on. He does. He's not sitting there scratching his head going, hmm, what's going on with Pastor D? He knows what's going on with me. But when we're open with God then God can work in our hearts. Today we're going to talk about trauma. Trauma. And many of you here have endured severe abuse. You've been through some devastating trials, heartbreaking pain. And today, maybe some of you are, are dealing with a heavy heart. And you've been praying and seeking God out. Asking God to relieve what's going on inside of you. And a lot of it is because we've had trauma in our lives, and it's trauma that we have, we've never dealt with. We've just kind of glossed it over. So I want to begin with a question, what is trauma? What is trauma? Well, trauma is a response to deeply disturbing or, just, or a distressing event. It's a response to a deeply disturbing or distressing event. Now, some, think of, some people think that trauma is just purely physical. It's either a physical injury or physical abuse or something physically has happened to you. But while trauma can be physical, and there is aspects of it that it is, it can also be emotional, it can be spiritual, and it can be mental. And one thing I want you to grasp this morning as we're going into this is that wounds you can't see can hurt as much as the ones you can see. Wounds you can't see can hurt as much as the ones you can see. And here's the thing. Sometimes those wounds take longer to heal. And many of you have been hurt. Deeply hurt, deeply wounded, been through horrible experiences. And if you've been in the body of Christ long enough, you know there's going to be a lot of well-meaning Christians that are going to come to you, and they're going to try to give you biblical advice on how to deal with the trauma. 
or how to deal with what you've been through. And I'll tell you what verse comes up all the time, Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's a beautiful verse. It's a beautiful verse. Paul pins this in the midst, in the, in the midst of being in turmoil and dealing with trauma. We're going to talk about this. This verse is true, but here's what you need to understand. It's not always helpful, at least not yet, not in this moment. Because some of you may be in shock and not even realize it. Some of you may be in denial today and not realize it. Some of you are moody today and don't realize it. Some of you are anxious or numb or guilty. And the reason that you are is because there's been trauma in your life and you've never healed from the trauma. You've never healed from it. The title of today's message is Three Ways to Seek Healing from Trauma. Let's pray. And Father, we thank you for this morning, and we thank you, Lord, as we go into this tough subject, God, that we have you, we have your word, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the blood of Christ. And Lord, when we have that in our lives, then we have the ability to heal. So Lord, this morning, may may we truly surrender to you, may we take down the walls and the facades and the fakeness, Lord, and just expose ourselves to you. Have your way with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and all the church said, amen. I don't know about you, but I come from the generation of get over it. I come from the generation of get over it. No matter what happened in my life, no matter how many bones I broke, and I broke a lot of bones, how many times I got hurt, How many times I dealt with abusive situations in my life. A lot of you know my story. I was told to rub a little dirt on it and move on, just get over it. Here's the thing you need to understand this morning. is You you just don't get over trauma. You have to heal from it. It's not getting over what's happened. It's healing from what's happened. And this morning, my prayer is that we bring a foundational understanding to our hearts and minds of how to deal with trauma and how to heal from trauma and show you in Scripture, show you in Scripture how you can pursue that healing that God wants you to have. Now, as we get started into this, I want to talk about three types of trauma that are prevalent in our lives. There's three types. The first one is acute trauma. Acute trauma. What is that? It's a response from a one-time traumatic event. Maybe you've been in a car accident, right? Maybe you, you had a, a horrible illness. Maybe you went through a natural disaster. I remember as a kid, I was uh, six or seven years old, and we were living in Ohio at the time, and my mom had taken uh, my sister and I and my grandmother. We went to a, uh, like a Mardi Gras on Lake Erie. And my mother kept looking out across the lake, and she says, man, those clouds don't look right. There's something about those clouds that don't look right. And pretty soon she's like, hey, you know what? We need to get moving to the car because she goes, that's a tornado. That's a tornado getting ready to start. My grandma's like, oh, we don't get tornadoes here. My mom's like, no, that is going to be a tornado. Let's go. So she grabs my sister and I, and she starts pulling us. So naturally, my grandmother starts following, and sure enough, all of a sudden, Boom, the funnel comes down, hits the water, comes across. Seven or eight people died that day in that tornado. It was horrific. I'll never forget that feeling of trying to escape. And I can can relive it right now. I can vividly see the images that were, that are in my head that were happening, you know, 60 years ago. Maybe you had a complication as you were giving birth to one of your children. Maybe you've had a date rape. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what that one-time traumatic event was, but that's acute trauma. The second type of trauma that we deal with is called chronic. This is long-term response from a prolonged or repeated event. Maybe it's uh, for a teen who's been bullied for years in high school, has been bullied. 
Maybe it's ongoing racism. Maybe you have been in a home with a mom or dad that's an alcoholic or both. Trust me, I know how that is. I, went, I lived that life. Maybe you've been sexually abused over and over and over. Chronic trauma is a long-term response for prolonged or repeated events. And then you have complex trauma. And that's a response to multiple and ongoing events. Maybe you were raised in a home where your parents were constantly fighting, or maybe you're in a marriage where you're constantly fighting. You know what? Maybe you were in the military and you had been exposed to ongoing um, trauma as you saw your, your friends or your buddies being killed or whatever has happened. And so these three acute, complex, and chronic are mostly what people deal with in their lives. And here's what you need to understand about trauma. Trauma changes how you see people, how you see God, and how you see your lives. It's difficult for you to trust people. It's difficult for you to trust God. It's difficult for you to give and to to extend empathy to others. It's hard to let people get close to you. And your whole life is a wreck and you feel like you're on a terrified ride. This is what trauma can do to you. So how do we heal from trauma? Well, this is what's so awesome about God is he shows us how and he shows, shows us how through the life of the Apostle Paul. Now, most of the time, we don't think of Paul as being a trauma victim. We see Paul as this great apostle, responsible for writing two-thirds of the New Testament. But in his writings, and if you really look at his writings and what he's saying, you will see that Paul addresses acute, chronic, and complex trauma in his life. Paul was a devout Jew. And his conversion to being a Christ believer was a traumatic event. It was traumatic. Mine, I felt bad. I was a sinner. I knew I was. I'd been seeking God, searching for God. And I wasn't in a traumatic moment in my life. I was coming at a point in my life when I realized I needed Jesus and I wanted to be loved. But no, Paul's conversion was different. In Acts chapter 9, we see Paul. He was out arresting and murdering Christ believers. And a light from heaven shines on, excuse me, shines on him. He's knocked off of his horse. And he hears Jesus say to him, Saul, why are you persecuting me, man? What are you doing? Saul's blinded for three days. For three days, he's in darkness. For three days, he's calm contemplating what has just happened to him. He's had a traumatic event in his life. Paul goes from Christ killer to Christ preacher in a matter of moments. And God rewarded him with a six-figure salary and great benefits and babes and glory and all that? No! That's not how Paul was rewarded. For the rest of his life, he endured prolific abuse prolific abuse, running for his life. Almost his entire time, he was following Jesus. How do I know this? Because the book of Acts tells us. Acts chapter 9, verses 23 and 25. There was a conspiracy in Damascus by the Jews to kill Paul. What does he do? He flees. In Antioch, what happens? Persecution against Paul and Barnabas rises to be so great that they got to flee. Iconium. Acts chapter 14, verses 2 and 5 and 6, Jews and Gentiles try to stone Paul, and he gets out. Lystra, (laughs) Acts chapter 14, 19, Paul doesn't get lucky. He gets stoned and dragged outside of the city. Acts chapter 17, verses 5 through 9, Paul escapes the Jews who rush Jason's home. Acts chapter 17, verses 13 and 14. Paul's preaching in Berea, and he has to be sent away to the coast. Why? Because they're trying to kill him. Acts chapter 18, verses 12 through 17. Paul's arrested and brought to the judgment seat in Corinth. And in Jerusalem, in Acts 21, verses 27 through 36, we saw Paul is arrested and beaten in Jerusalem. Paul endured ongoing severe trauma. 
I never looked at Paul's life like this. Paul was abused. You think you and I are going through it as Christians? I think Paul was going through it, church. So how do we heal, church? How do we heal? Well, the Apostle Paul gives us three examples of how we heal from trauma. Three of them. And this morning, church, it's so important. Please open your hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit this morning because God really wants to heal you. He really does. And so I just want you to just, for just the next 20 minutes, just put everything out of your mind and focus on the words that, that the Holy Spirit has for us this morning. The first way we deal with trauma is we process the pain of our trauma. We process it. Remember, I've been telling you for the past few weeks that you can't heal from what you can't name, right? If you ignore or suppress or try to forget what's going on with the trauma that's happened in your life, we don't heal. Listen, the way we start to heal is when we begin to process it. Maybe you've been abused. That was me, right? Maybe, unfortunately, if you're a woman, you've been raped. Maybe as a child, you were abandoned. I ha- I was, that was mine, too. Listen, we have to process it, church. We have to process it. But we're, we're told to forget it, suppress it. Nobody wants to hear what you've been through. And here's the thing. The reason we want to bury it is because the reality is, is that we feel vulnerable. We feel helpless. We don't want people to know that something's happened to me in my life, that there was a weak moment in my life, that there was a moment in my life when I wasn't able to stand up for myself or take care of myself. Church, listen, if you can put this up on the screen. Instead of seeking connection, we prioritize protection. That's what we do. Instead of seeking connection, we prioritize protection. I've got to protect myself, right? I've already been hurt. I've already been abused. I've already been through these traumatic things in my life. I cannot connect with people. The priority in my life is to protect myself. Church, that doesn't work, especially in the body of Christ. No, what we need to do is this. We need to, we, we don't heal in isolation We heal best in community. We heal best in community, church. See, the devil wants to isolate us. The devil doesn't want us to connect. The devil doesn't want us to be open. The devil devil wants us to keep keep having online services, and and, and 75% of the church does online services now, and and 25% comes to church. See, he wants to isolate us. But we heal best in community. Because here's what you need to understand, and you may not want to hear this this morning, but this is the truth. If you ignore your pain, if you ignore the trauma that's happened in your life, that wound will never heal. It will still be there, and here's what happens. We begin to cope with it through other means, drugs, alcohol, sex. That's how I dealt with the trauma in my life. That's how I dealt with it when I was, when I was a young, youngster on the streets. That's, this is what I did. Drugs, alcohol, and sex. That's what I did. Right? Because I found relief in the trauma and the pain through these avenues. And that's not what God has for us. It's not what God had for me. He had a much better plan and a much better way for me to deal with it. <laughs> so we have to process it, church. We have to process it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28, Paul processes what he's been through. He literally processes it. He says in those verses, he's been to prison too many times to count. Five times he received 39 lashes. Three times he was beaten with rods. He was stoned, shipwrecked, almost starved to death, froze, was in constant peril, constant danger, Paul is processing his trauma in Scripture. He talks about his trauma. Church, this morning, I encourage you to process the pain of your trauma. 
Go to trusted friends. Go to a pastor. Go to a Christian counselor. Go to somebody who can help you. Because if you don't begin to process it, it will never work. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, he says, We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Do you see what Paul said there? Everything that he had been through, it was beyond his ability to endure. So much that he despaired of life itself. Listen, when people tell you God will not give you more than you can handle, it's not scriptural. I'm so sick of hearing that. That's not scriptural. He's talking about temptation. When Paul writes about he, he, will give you, he won't give you more than you can handle, we're talking about temptation, not life. Some of you are so, listen, I have felt like taking my life when I was young because I was in such despair. I did not want to live anymore. Some of you have felt like that. Some of you may feel like that this morning if you can hear my voice. I'm telling you right now, process the trauma. Find somebody. Talk about it because God wants to work through your life and he wants to bring healing. So we process the pain of our trauma with trusted people. Number two, we prayerfully press into God with our trauma. We prayerfully press into God with our trauma. We've got to press into God with what's going on. This is what Paul does in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. What does Paul say there? He says, I've got this thorn. I've got this, this thing that's tormenting my life. Church, I'm going to break this down to you this morning. All you super Christians, man, all of us have a thorn. Every one of us have a thorn. There is a thorn that you've had your whole life. And man, you have cried out to God to get rid of it. Well, this was Paul. Now, we don't know what the situation was that was traumatizing him. I've heard various things. It's an eye disease. He was in chronic pain. It was a person. It doesn't really matter. See, if God wanted to be specific in his word, we would have known exactly what it was that Paul was dealing with. But I think because I think Paul's vague because of this. He doesn't want us to to think, well, unless it's this specific thing, then the trauma or what I'm dealing with is not a big deal. But it is a big deal. It's a big deal to God, church. He loves you so much. He loves us so much. So Paul is dealing with this thorn. In chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians, verse 12, it reads, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Now, I explained to you some, some months back that when Paul says three times, that word three times, the way it's being used, it's not like a, okay, God, take it away, please, amen. It was a season of prayer. Three times he had a season of prayer. And he, did, he doesn't blame God here. He, he has this intense prayer time with God where he's praying, where he's pleading. He's asking God to take it away. Church, this is what we need to do with our trauma and our pain. We need to take our hurt and pain to God. And then we need to do it again. And then we need to do it a third time, and a fifth time, and an eighth time. However many times you have to go before the Lord and plead to Him to help you to take this out of your life, to help you to heal from it. Because I got news for you, church. You can unload on God. He's big enough to handle it. You can tell God, that wasn't fair. I've said that to the Lord. That shouldn't have happened, God. It's not my fault. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to heal. Listen, we need to be honest with God. Don't hold back. Be transparent. Why? Because he tells us in Scripture to cast all our cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. Isn't it reassuring that we can go to God with our cares? That he's not sitting up there and going, uh, I'm too busy for this. How many of you grew up in the church that said that? Jesus and God was too busy to handle your minute details. That's why we had all these other people we were supposed to pray to so that they could handle God's little things. There's nothing little in God's life when it comes to us. Think of your children, if you have children. 
There was never anything trivial with your kids. As a parent, it always tugged at your heart. Now, there was things you were like, get away from me with that. But if they came to you with a, with a hurt or with a want or a need or whatever it is, man, it grabbed your heart. Why? Because that was your child. That's how God is with us. We're his children, church. There's nothing you can't bring to the Father. There's nothing in your life that you can't bring. So we need to be honest, to be open. Paul says, three times I pleaded with the Lord. Three seasons I pleaded. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10 says this. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But now here's what God said. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Do you see that? In weakness, right? That's when his power is made perfect. Paul says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul went to the Lord, man. He said, man, I need help, God. I need help. This thorn, it's, it's ripping me apart. And God says, that's a good thing, man. He says, because in your weakness, that's when my power will be perfect in you. Why? Because sometimes, church, that thorn is there to remind you that you need Jesus. Sometimes it's there to remind you that you need Christ. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that God won't heal you of it. Now, it may not completely go away, but God will heal. Heal means restore. But, but God just wants you to be open with him this morning. Remember this, church. Nothing can change your past, but God can heal your broken heart. See, some of you are so caught up in living in the past. Well, this is what's happened in the past. This is what happened in the past. This is what happened in the past. This is what was going on in the past. You cannot get to the future because you're staying in the past. Past failures, past difficulties, past failed relationships. Oh, well, that relationship will never be better because in the past. Listen, you can't change your past. I can't change my past, but God can heal your broken heart, and he can heal anything in your life if you let him. He can heal that broken relationship if you want to, but here's what happens. Oh, I want to heal that relationship, but then here comes the but. Well, then you don't. There's no but. If you want to go and heal a relationship, there's no and, there's no but. You go and you do what you got to do. Psalm 34, 18 says this, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Some of you this morning are brokenhearted and you're crushed in spirit. I want you to know that God saves those who are in that condition. Why? Because we realize our great need for God. We realize our great need for God. So number one, we process the pain of our trauma with trusted people. Number two, we prayerfully press into God with our trauma and number three, we, we pursue purpose in our trauma. That's a tough one right there. To pursue, pursue purpose in our trauma? Because you need to understand something. Things happen in our lives. Bad things happen in our lives. Why? It's because of the world that we live in. Not because God's a bad God. It's because God is a God who says, I'm going to give man choices and these choices will come with consequences and so there are times when things happen to us that are outside of our control <laughs> things that happen to us that that we don't understand why god is allowing it to happen because god if you there was a song i heard some years back that said god if you if you're god then why did you let that accident happen why does god allow it again because it's about choice. Now, does God interfere sometimes? Of course he does. Does God have our best interests at heart? Of course he does. But we don't understand God's purpose and what we're going through. And the reason is, 
is because we don't pursue the purpose. I shared with you some months back about Rick Warren, who lost his 27-year-old son to, to suicide. And him and his wife were devastated. They were devastated by what happened. And he took four months off from the ministry. And it was just him and his wife and God. That was it. And he pleaded and he cried out to God and he was angry. He was upset. He didn't understand. God, why didn't you heal my son? Because his son had mental health problems. And one day he took a gun out and killed himself. And in the midst of his pain and in the midst of seeking God, in the midst of, of bringing his heart and everything that was in his heart to God and being totally transparent with God, one morning the Lord speaks to his heart and he tells him, don't waste your pain. Don't waste your pain. And he sat there in that moment thinking about the words that the Lord was saying to him. God, what do you mean don't waste my pain? What do you mean don't waste my pain? And the Lord says just that. Take your pain and use it to my glory. Church, when you use your pain to help others, God will bless you in ways you can't possibly imagine. This is what, he, this is what Rick Warren said. And I thought about that, and I thought, wow, what a powerful statement. When you use your pain to help others, <laughs> and he's retired now. He stepped away from, from pastoring the church he was at for 42 years. And now his ministry is a whole other ministry, helping families who are dealing with, with family members and people in their lives who have mental health problems who have contemplated suicide or, or have had family members that have committed suicide. He said he would have never, ever, ever stepped into that arena of life had it not been for what he went through with his son. Church, that's some deep stuff, man. That's some deep stuff. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 3, he says, Praise be to the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You understand that, right? That it's through our pain, through the things that we've been through, the process that we've been through, that we actually have the ability to help others. See, I get drug addicts and alcoholics. I understand that. Why? Because I was one, right? I get... I get the, the people that are in the, the sex world and all that. Why? Because I was in that. I understand it. But most people are like, oh, oh, you know, but you don't understand it. So therefore, it's appalling to you. For me, I'm just like, okay, that's, I get it. I know you're just, you're just medicating. I get it. I was a youngster. I was just trying to medicate the pain in my life. You know? <laughs> Some of you are, are dealing with failures in your life. Maybe you've had a bankruptcy or something like that. Well, you can walk somebody else through that. The Bible says obey the laws of the land. Bankruptcy is in the Bible. It's actually in the Old Testament. You should read about it. Sometimes things happen in life. Situations happen and you have no alternative. But who better to walk somebody through it than somebody who's been through it? And this is what Paul is telling us. And this is how we pursue the purpose in our pain is when we begin to take that pain and begin to understand that that pain, it was a painful moment in our lives. It was a traumatic moment in our life. But God can use that moment in our lives to help others who have been affected. As I said, this, is, this was a really, really tough outline for me to do, to go through. Because I'm talking a lot from my heart this morning. Because I know what it's like to not be okay. And I know there's some of you this morning that, not, that are not okay. Church, it took me 40 years to heal over the, the trauma that happened in my life. And I realized this morning, church, and I was sharing this with one of my elders in the church, 
that I still haven't fully dealt with it. That it can, it can rear its ugly head on me. And it can put me in a place of discouragement and depression, even though it's happened so many years ago. Because one thing about our minds, it is the most magnificent recorder in the world. And you can remember events from when you were a child, right? I can't remember yesterday, but I can sure remember things from when I was four years old and five years old. My emotional and physical pain and trauma in my life, it was real. It was real. I still have the scars from it. But I healed. I healed to the point where I understood that what I had been through was for others. Now, if you've never seen a movie called Goodwill Hunting, like, it's got more F-bombs in it than any movie I've ever heard. But I will tell you this. That movie, I've used that movie to reach into kids' hearts and minds and lives that have been physically abused. Why? Because when I saw that movie, I knew what that movie was about. I understood it. I'd lived it. And I knew that there were others out there that needed to hear the message that it wasn't their fault. It's not your fault what happened to you. You have to understand, church, our pain is personal. But God wants to use it for others and his glory. But we have to get outside of that first before it can happen. <laughs> because God will never waste a hurt. But we've got to get outside of it. And once we're outside of it, once we've begun to heal from it, then Romans 8.28 makes sense. Because now I can look back at my life and I can truly say that I know that in all things God worked for the good of me who loved him and who was called according to his purpose. I was called according to his purpose. I have a purpose. I have a lane that I'm in. And that's where I need to stay. And so the pain in my purpose was revealed to me. And it opened a whole nother door for me to pour into people's lives. I'll end with this, church. Your trauma may not be your fault. It may not be your fault. You may have went through something devastating at the hands of somebody else or a circumstance that was outside of you. But I'm going to tell you this. Pursuing God for healing is your responsibility. You have a responsibility to seek God out to heal and to restore and to help you through the pain. Church, don't get over it. Heal from it. Father, thank you for reminding us, Lord, that the trauma and the pain in our lives, Lord, that, Father, there's, there's things that have happened in our lives, God, that we had no control over. But, man, Lord, you want us to not only heal from that, but you want us to use it in our lives. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done in our lives, Lord. Thank you that we can stand on Romans 8, 28. And, Lord, that verse may not make sense to somebody this morning, but in due time it will. I ask, Father, that you would bring healing to the hearts of those here today and online. Father, that they be open and honest and transparent, that we, we will never forget, Lord. But we need to heal. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the church said.